So I'm gonna show you how to make these shakes real quick using Dissolve Shake by Sapphire and not S Shake because Dissolve Shakes are better than S Shakes and I'll tell you exactly why. Okay, so I'm gonna be explaining what every single value in Dissolve Shake means using this little cube. So starting off with the Dissolve percentage and the amplitude, both of them basically have the same job, which is to adjust the strength of the shake. So as 20 as its Dissolve percentage, this is what the shake is gonna look like. And if I set this to 5, it's just going to reduce the strength of the shake. And by the way, don't go over 30 for the dissolve percentage because that's when it actually starts to dissolve. And now you're probably wondering why we're using dissolve shake instead of S shake in the first place. And it's because we get two amplitude sliders and we can use one of them as our graph and the other one as an alternative amplitude slider, which is a lot more convenient than having to adjust the graph every single time you adjust the amplitude like you would in S shake this will make so much more sense when we actually make the shakes and now we can move down to the other stuff we have here so now we have frequency and frequency is actually pretty simple it's just going to make the shake slower if you have a slower frequency and it's just going to make it faster if you have a higher frequency that's all there is to it and we're going to skip seed for now because i want to talk about it when we're discussing what the phase is because i want to show you the difference between both of them side by side so now let's talk about the XYZ and Tilt Shake and all of them share the same controls but for their own respective dimensions meaning that the X Shake is only going to affect how the shake moves horizontally and the Y Shake is only going to make it move vertically then we can use both of them to come up with a shake that moves in multiple directions right? So now let's talk about what each of these individual values mean. So starting off with the random app for Y Shake it's just going to affect the randomness of the Y Shake and nothing else and then you can use the random frequency to adjust the frequency of just the random amplitude. And the same goes for the wave amp and the wave frequency. The only difference between the wave amp and the random amp is that the wave amp is not random at all and it just follows the same pattern forever. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to look at before we start making our shakes is what the phase and the seed mean. So if this is what the graph of the shake looks like, so the phase is just going to affect which phase of the shake you can see. And then if you adjust the seed, then it's just going to change what the entire shake looks like. So it's just going to change up the whole entire graph. And remember, it's still going to follow the same patterns you set for the shake. And the shake is still going to look similar. It's just going to have a different starting point. So now that you know pretty much everything you really need to know about the shake, now we can actually go on and make the shake. So we're just going to head over to what we made in the last video. So first, we're going to create a build up shake when the scope is opened up before Jet takes a shot. So I'm just going to create an adjustment layer for these two layers and add dissolve shake on it. And once you do that, you can set everything to zero except the Y shake. So now that's the only thing that we're going to worry about in this shake. Now we can set the random amplitude to 120 and the wave amplitude to 50. So this way, the shake is a bit more random than it is wavy. So real quick, we're just going to set the keyframes for the shake by pressing the stopwatch on the amplitude. And then we're going to set a total of three keyframes. The first keyframe with the amplitude of three will go right in the middle where the clips change. And then we're going to set two keyframes of zero on the first and the last frame of the adjustment layer like this. Once you do that, we're just going to select all the keyframes and press F9 to easy ease it and make the graph like this. And I'm just going to set the frequency to 13 to add more impact to the shake. And now we're pretty much done with the build up shake. And now we can go on to make the impact shake. And as the name suggests, it is going to be a pretty heavy shake, which is going to look really good. So for that, we're just going to add another dissolve shake in the same adjustment layer and quickly set the shake to my desired values. I know exactly which values to use because I've been doing this for a while and the only way to really learn this stuff is to practice it as much as you can. So once you've got these settings down, we're just going to set the three keyframes like we did earlier but with a slightly different graph. So now that we have the graph made, I encourage you to like play around with the frequency, the amplitude to like come up with a slightly different shake that looks better to you. So once you're happy with the shake you made, we're going to create one last shake on the first clip and it's going to be a very subtle one. So for this shake, I'm going to keep it very low frequency and I only want to adjust the X and the tilt shake. So here's the values I use for that. And here's what the edits look like now. And now we're pretty much done with the series. All you need to do now is to work on these three things and really master them. And once you do master them, you're, you're going to see a significant improvement in your edits. 
So thank you guys for watching my tutorials and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.